Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem, welcome back to today's Daf Kedushin Memtes. We are holding on Memchesim and Beis, two lines off the bottom of the Yomit. So in the Mishnah we learned about a fellow who offered an Isha a silver coin for Kedushin. It turns out to be gold. Tanakama says, well, uh, it's not what he promised. It doesn't work. Rabbi Shema says, well, he uh, improved on the deal and of course, She's okay with it, and she's Mekudeshus. And according to the way Abaye learned the Mishnah, we're speaking that this fellow made a shaliach to hand uh, the Isha a silver coin, to sort of lend it to him and uh, give it to the Isha on his behalf. He upped it to gold. Reb Shimon says, since he upgraded, it works, despite the fact that I asked him to... Um, lend him the uh, silver coin for Kedushin, and he went up to gold. Uh, a person is not necessarily particular about these things. If anything, uh, he, he got a better uh, better deal. He got a, uh, a gold coin instead of a silver coin. And therefore it's Mekodesh's. Amr Abayi. So Abayi throughout Shas was accustomed to sort of lining up Shito's opinions which you know, relate to each other, which are sort of on the same wavelength. Amar Abaye. So we have Rabbi Shimon over here, and another two, Tanoim, elsewhere, they're all sort of on the same track regarding this concept, that we assume a person is not necessarily particular about his instructions as soon, as long as, you know, it turned out as he asked or as he asked for, or perhaps even better. Rabbi Shimon, Rabbi Shimon Gamliel, Rabbi Elazar, Kula Svirlo, they all hold Mare Mokaim Huloi. And Rashi explains, for instance, I asked him to do something which is uh, relatively easy. He decided to upgrade it to something more difficult, more uh, complex. I'm okay with it. I'm just Mare Mokaim when I indicated, um, you know, this particular thing. I wasn't insistent on doing that. I just want to make it easier for you. If you want to upgrade, you want to be more... Uh, Accommodating, good on I'll be more than happy, and therefore we say it's valid. It works. So where do we have the three shittes? Well, Rabbi Shimon, that's in our mission. Hadam Moran, the fellow went ahead and upgraded from silver to gold, went beyond the call of duty. It works. Rabbi Shimon, the Snan, we have a mission. Get pashut edav mitoich. Mikushar Edav Me'achayra, Rashi explains. There are two types of divorce documents. One is a standard get pashut. So you have a sheet on which you write the sheet of paper on which you write the, uh, I should say parchment, on which you write the get. Uh, beneath the actual text of the get you have the Edom. That's your standard get. It's called get pashut. Edom Mitoicha, the Edom are within the actual text, beneath the Lashon of the get. A makusher is a very specific type of get which was designed with kaihanim in mind. Rashi says kaihanim, due to their, due to their you know, conscientiousness and meticulosity and uh, you know, exactness and learnedness and you know they have uh, within them the ability to be uh, demanding and exacting and uh, perhaps prone to irritability. Interesting. So the Gemara says, Kahanim are Ka'asanim, and therefore there's a concern that they might, you know, a difficult moment, they might just uh, do away with their wives, send a, a get, Avimagarashur, right then and there, without due contemplation. Therefore the Chacham say, you know, let's slow down the process. If you're a Kayan, you want to be Magarish, okay, but take your time. They designed a more complex, time uh, consuming uh, process to generate the get for a kain. It's called get mekusher. So you take a sheet of uh, parchment and you leave a s sort of an empty line and you write a line. An empty line and write a line. And Rashi explains you would fold over the empty spaces. So you take the line and fold it over the empty space and put a signature on the back of that, uh, of that line, of that text. Then you fold it again over the empty space, another signature, so on and so forth. 
And this takes time, this is complex, and allows the Kayin to reconsider and perhaps find a uh, more, uh, you know, suitable uh, way to address his difficulties. In any case, we have to get Pashat format, we have to get Mekushar format, get Pashat Edavar inside, Mekushar the Edavar outside, Edav Me'achirav. So, suppose he asked a Shliach, he asked the, um, the, um, the cipher to write a, uh, a, a get Pashat. Okay? Okay, he did so. Pashat, Shakasu Edov Me'achirav, but the the Edom signed in the back instead of inside. Or Umekushar, the Havishtar Mekushar, Edom were meant to be outside, and they flipped it around. Shakasu Edom Misaychay, and the Edom were signed inside. Shneim Sulam, either way it doesn't work, Mashi says. It doesn't conform to the uh, you know, required procedure. So it's possible. It depends. I agree that an get pushed, who's Adam are outside, doesn't work. But the other way it works. You have a Makushar, who's Adam are meant to be in the back. Turns out the Adam are inside. Kasha, it works. Because there's a simple solution. Just leave it as is. Don't fold and sew down the folds. Leave it alone. Just leave it blank. So you have your text and you write them on the bottom. And Rashi explains, even though you have lots of spaces, you have the blank lines in between, it doesn't matter. It's okay. It doesn't uh, invalidate the get. Okay, so according to this sheet too, if he mistakenly Signed the Adam inside of it, get Makushar, just turn it into a get uh, Pashat, and uh, you can use it. You're meant to follow the Minig Hamoka, the common practice. Now, Rashi explains a place where they write Pashat, and he did Makushar, or the other way around. The minig in this city is to write a get makusher. Perhaps everybody has get makushers, even Israelim. And he wrote a pashut. It's possible because when well, the husband asked the shliach to write him a get, he meant in accordance with the local customs. Right? So there's a new aspect to the uh, discussion here. If it was done through a shliach who didn't follow orders, it's possible. Asks the Gemara, does anybody disagree with this? It's just a simple, obvious halacha. Tanakama wouldn't disagree with this. With Tanakama, Leslie, Minigam, you mean to say Tanakama, who did not reference this point, disagrees with it? Of course not. Right? So, how could you, uh, how could we uh, assume Tanakama is disagreeing with Rabshim Amlil? It wouldn't be, it wouldn't make sense that Tanakama would allow a get to be written, a get which was inconsistent with the local custom and is inconsistent with the husband's instructions. Havamar of Ashi, so Ravashi says you're right. Rabban Shimon Gamliel is not coming to disagree with the Tanakama, he's talking about a totally different case. He's talking where the shaliach deviated from his instruction. A totally do, new situation. And Ravashi comes and explains all the aspects of this halach. Asra the Nehigi B'Pashut. So in this town they write Pashut. V'avadai Mekusha and the shaliach wrote a Mekusha. Or the other way. Inamri, V'asra the Nehigi B'Mekusha. In this town they write Ged Mekusha. V'avadai B'Pashut and the Sefer decided to write a Pashut. Kuli Amalai Pligi. Devadai Kpeda. Everybody agrees that uh, certainly there is a kpeda that you know the husband certainly is particular and is makpid, right, to write it the way uh, the way it's accepted in the uh, local town, right. 
So certainly he's uh, makpid to do it in the acceptable manner. He pligi. So when do we have a machlekes in this in this price between Tanakama and Rabbi and Shem Gamliel? But Asr the Nehigi ben Mepashet ben Mekushin. So we have a, a place where they um, they have both options. They give you both options. You come to the cipher. He offers you both types. You want the Pashat, okay? You want the Mekushin, fine. So in this town they do both. But the husband asked. For a specific one, but I'm really over leaving Pashut. He tells the Sefer to write him a Pashut. And what did the Sefer do? Vazel, he made it more difficult for himself. He made a more complex get. Vazel, Vavadi Mikush. Okay? So, ultimately, he didn't really deviate from the local practices because in this town they, they'll do both. Right? So, the Gemara and the Hava Mina thought. The derech was to do one type. He did something else. How can there be a, a, a? How can we even consider it to be kasher? He certainly didn't want it the other way. The answer is no. In this town, they do both. We have both options available. Problem is, the husband asked for one, and the sefer did the other. So that's the machlekes between Tanakama and Rabbi Shimon Gamliel. Mar Savar, so Tanakama and the next sheet of Ruchaninim Gamliel, they hold Kpeda that when the Mishaleach, in this case the husband, asks for a Eget Pashut, he's mocked, but he wants that. Dafk, don't do me any favors, don't give me a Mekusha. So since he deviated, he didn't follow instructions, the get as possible. Mar Savar, Mar Em Mokem Huloi. Whereas Rabbi Shem Gamliel disagrees, he says, look, you know, I was just trying to make it easier for you. You can make me a Pashat if you wish. But of course, if you upgraded it to Makusha, I'll accept that, that's fine. Because ultimately, it conforms with the Minagam Medina. So we see that according to Rabbi Shimon Leel, even if a person deviates from his instructions, um, we just say, you know, Mara Mokamulai, the fellow is just trying to make it easier for you. If you tried to, uh, uh, you offered an upgrade, you made it more complex, more detailed. You mashbiach, of course it works, because I'm okay with that as well. So this is consistent with Rabbi Shimon and our Mishnah, who says, Mara Mokim Huloi, if you upgrade it, it works. And finally we have Rabbi Lazar, the Snat. Ha'isha Sh'amra Yisga Baligiti Mokim Plain. This time it's the Isha, asking a shliach to receive her get in uh, this and this place, in Chicago. V'ki Wulo Gitim Mokim Acher. And the shliach uh, met up with the husband in New York, and that's where he took the get. Puzzle. It doesn't work. She asked Chicago. For Rabbi Lazar, he says, it's okay, Machsher. I was trying to, you know, trying to show you where, trying to indicate to you where he is. Uh, if you happen to find him elsewhere and it's easy for you, no problem. al Savar, Maramokim So you see this concept here as well. So Abai lined up three shites who uh, all hold this... Uh, of this concept of Mara Mokim Uloi, even if there was some sort of deviation, for instance, an improvement on the instructions, that's okay, because I'm not particular about, uh, you know, the nitty-gritty details of uh, whatever it is, as long as you uh, did what I asked you to do, and um, I got what I needed, I'm okay. Now, back to the mission, where the fellow offered her, you know, a silver coin turns out to be gold, etc., etc. Tanakama says it doesn't work because it's not as per his um, commitment. Rabbi, Sh- Rabbi, Sh- Rabbi Shimon says, yeah, if it was an upgrade, if he misled her, but in a good way, she's okay with it. It's Mukhadeshus. Amar Ula, you should know it's limited to specifics, to financial upgrades. Machleik is Bishvach Mamin. This whole machlek is meaning. Rabbi Shimon is only allowing it to go through if he improved in a financial uh, you know, context. He promised her silver, he gave her gold. Aval b'shvach yoichsen. But let's say uh, he told her that he's uh, a Yisrael. No, I'm just an ordinary yid. And it turns out that he's uh, a lofty kayin. 
Divri HaKoyl Eino Mekodeshes. When it comes to lineage issues, all agree it doesn't work. Even Rabbi Shimon would agree. Why? My time and why? Because he was sort of down, downplaying his uh, you know, status and his prominence. He was trying to like, surprise her. No, I'm just an ordinary Jew. Turns out I'm really a Kayan. Right? You're in for a surprise, right? So, it's an expression of haughtiness and pride. She's not interested in a prideful fellow. <laughs> Misana, there's a marshal. Misana, you know, a shoe that's too big for me, I can't wear. This fellow is too big for me. Misana, the rab mikarei, greater than my foot. I don't, I don't interested. So when it comes to shvach, yechs, and all agree, an upgrade is actually a downgrade. Ta'adi nam yachu, you find the same in a b'raiz, and moidir, abshimun, abshimun, would agree, mhitel shvach, yechs, and mkadeshes, if the uh, toe is related to Yechsim, it doesn't work. Amar Ravashi, I'll prove the same from our Mishnah. Part 2 of our Mishnah coming up soon. Mas Nisan Amideka, where we find that Rav Shimon would agree to Tanakam. If the issue is Yechus and lineage, if he misled her, even for the better, it doesn't work. Mas Nisan Amideka, the Tani Mishnah says, Amanash Ani Kayim Nemtza Levi. I'm a Kaddish Yon condition that I'm a Kayim. Turns out that he's only a Levi. Or well, the other way around. I said, I'm a Levi, but I'm a Kayin. Nosen, I belong to those group of people in the Sinim that are not meant to uh, marry into the community, right? So uh, that's uh, one level. Venimtza, Mamzer, turns out that he's worse. He's a Mamzer. Or he says, I'm a Mamzer, but I'm a Nosen. In all these cases, there's no Kedushin because he misled her. And we don't find Rabbi Shimon disagreeing. Apparently, he agrees to it. Because it's a yichus related mistake. That's a raya to Ula's concept. Maskev Lama Barabashi has a kash on that. You can't derive from the Mishnah and conclude as such. Because if that's the case, the Mishnah continues. The condition is on condition that I, I have a daughter. Or he says, I have a maidservant. Migudelis. Older, you know, adult, mature in age. If Ainlay turns out that he was just uh, saying stories. Or he says, I'm not Ainlay, on condition I don't have these. But it turns out that he has an older daughter. It's not a condition, right? The Shvach Mamanu. Now, these are examples of, uh, you know, financial inaccuracies, right? He says he has a, a daughter that can help out, he has a Shivcha, right? And um, and, and you don't find Rabbi Shimon disagreeing, right? The Mishnah later brings this case and doesn't conclude with Rabbi Shimon responding and saying, well, if it's an upgrade, it works, as he did in the uh, case with the gold and the silver. Do you mean to say he's not really disagreeing? Of course he's disagreeing. It's one and the same concept. He upgraded financially. So why doesn't Rabbi Shimon mention his opposition to the halacha? Because there's no need. He already said it in the Reisha. You don't have to you know, repeat again and again. El apolog but Reisha. What did Mosefa? Once he opposed the Tanakama in part A of the Mishnah by the gold and the silver and the wine and the... It's assumed that he sticks to his opinion in the next part of the Mishnah as well. What did Mosefa? Achanami. So... Likewise, you know, you bring a raya from the Yichos, the Kain, and the Levi discrepancy. Well, where's Reb Shimon? Evidently, he, he agrees. No, he doesn't agree, but there's no re- need for him to repeat his shita again and again. He already expressed his shita in the Reish. There's no need to repeat it again later. So you have no right that he's agreeing when it comes to Yichos. Okay, Yashta says, no, 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 I can't compare. There is a firm basis for our right because he should have. He should have expressed his opposition. Reb Shimon should have. If indeed he opposes Tanakam, Hachiyash the Hasam, he's seen the case of the daughter and the maidservant, Idi vi Idi, the Shvach Mamein. Because the um, cases in the, in the ratio, the gold and the silver, and likewise the case with the maidservant, these are financial perks, right? So, it's pretty much one and the same. They're just variations of the same concept. He promised her a certain, you know, financial uh, perk, and it turns out that, he, right? So, 
So what's Rabbi Shimon expressed his shita and the ratio regarding monetary issues? It's assumed that he maintains the same approach in the next case, which is also a financial matter, as opposed to hacha when it comes to kain and levi and all that. The shvach yechsamu. We're speaking about lineage issues. It means that the public, if it is true that Rabbi Shimon maintains his opinion there as well, that if it was an upgrade to the better, it works. Nisni, he should have expressed it. I should not rely on the fact that he expressed his opinion when it comes to the gold and the silver, which is financial. This is Yichas, a totally different realm. The only way to know your opinion is by expressing it. He should have expressed it, the fact that he didn't. The fact that Rabbi Shimon remained silent indicates that he agrees to the Tanakhama. Only when it comes to financial issues. An upgrade is more exciting. When it comes to lineage issues, it's just an expression of haughtiness and it doesn't interest her. Another way to explain the Mishnah. You know, we had a raya. Again, okay, let's just backtrack. We had a raya. The Rav Shimon agrees by Shvach Yechsim that it doesn't work from the fact that he doesn't express his opinion in the next part of the Mishnah when it discusses Kain and Levi. The question was, well, why should he express his opinion again? He already expressed it in the Reisha. And you see the Mishnah mentions other cases of the older daughter and the uh, older Shivcha. There's no mentioning of Rav Shimon because he already mentioned his Shita. So the fact that he failed to duplicate his Shita doesn't mean he's agreeing. Let's re-interpret that part of the Mishnah. You're assuming that when he promises her Shivcha, it's a financial issue? No, no, no. There as well. The, the issue is yichas, prominence. How? You think that when he said, I have a, a bas migudelis, or shivcha migudelis, it's a reference to maturity and age? Somebody capable of helping out at home? No, no, that's not what he meant. My migudelis gadelis. It means in prominence. Rashi says, Chashuva. I have a prominent daughter. I have a prominent shivcha. That's what happened. So, he said, he, you know, he indicated he doesn't have this, and it turns out he has one. And now this new wife is going to have a competition. Somebody that holds themselves to be prominent and upstanding, full of confidence, and she's not interested in that. The Amra, he, because the wife will tell him, what did you do to me? You surprised me with this, uh, you know, uh, know-it-all uh, shifch, I'm not interested. I'm not interested in having somebody here that will spread gossip about me. The shakla, me she uh, will take what she sees over here. And go related to my neighbors. She'll... Uh, be telling everybody all my uh, ins and outs and stories. I'm not interested. So, once we've established that the case in the Seif of the Mishnah, the case with the Shifch and the Bas, is also a yichos oriented issue. She's getting more than she bargained for in a, in a bad way, in a bad way. It's a prominent concern, not a financial concern. So, if indeed Rabbi Shimon would, would still consider this a legal kedushin, because he sort of gave her more than he promised, right? It's called Hitel Shvach. Rabbi Shimon should have indicated so. He should have said so, that it works. The fact that he remained silent indicates that he is mighty, he agrees. Silver and gold, that's perfect. But surprising his new wife with this. Uh, older shifcha and this older daughter who are going to run the show. She's disinterested. And even if Shimon would agree, it doesn't work. Tana Rabbana. Almana shani kiriyayna. I'm a Kaddish on condition that I, I know how to read Chumash. Know how to read the Sefer Torah. At what point can he consider himself a kiriyayna? What's the minimum? Kiva shakar shloisha psukum besa knesses. Harizim Once he got the opportunity to 
read the three psukim. You know, in the olden days, the person who got the Aliyah would actually read the Torah. So once he expressed that ability, one time, he's called a Kuryayna, and she's Mekudosh. Hare Zim Kudosh. Rabbi Daimer, that's not enough. Ach Yukrabi Targum. He must read the psukim and also translate them into Aramaic. The Gemara figures, he's translating on his own. Targum, Yitaite. Person is meant to translate on his own. Vatan Yerbi Daimer, Targum, Pasuk Yitzurasai. Person not meant to use his own translation. He meant to use Targum Unculus, which comes from Sinai. But a person does it literally, Kitsurasai, the way he figures, he's a bad day. He's just uh, misrepresenting the Psukim. Hamais of Olav, on the other hand, person perhaps can think to himself, you know, Unculus added all kinds of interpretations, which were me Sinai, but, uh, you know, if he did it, I can also do it. Hareza Machar from Gadif, he's uh, distorting and it's uh, disrespectful to Hashem. So, you're not meant to go and. Uh, be creative in terms of uh, interpretations. Elamai Targum, Targum Dudan. It just means that he can uh, read the Psukim with the traditional Targum Unculus. Ba'ani Mili, when does this work? The Amr La Karyana, when he claimed to be a Karyana. So at a minimum, three Psukim work. Aval Amr Karana. But if he uh, pretended to be a Kara, that's how he pre- presented himself. I'm a Kara. I'm a Baal Mikra, I'm an expert in Chumash. You need much more than three Psukim. Adakari, Raiz, Navi, Yuksuvi, Bidiyuka, he has to have the ability to read the entire Tanakh perfectly. I'm not Shani Shoyna. Your Mukadesh is to me on condition that I'm a Shoyna. What does Shoyna mean? It means Allah is my Sina, he has to be proficient in those. Rabbi Echen Amar, Torah, means to say that he uh, he learns Torah, the Gemara figures Torah Shabbat Chsav, the written. The oral, the um, written Torah. Asks the Gemara, how could Rabbi Yechanan say that Shoyna uh, means the Torah Shabbat Chassav? Meisvet, we have a kasha from our Bryce, Ezoi Mishnah. How do we define the word Mishnah? Rabbi Yechanan Halachah, it means Halachah Mishnah Sina. Rabbi Yechanan Midrash, these are the Bryce, you know, the Safra, the Safri, which are expounded, which are Nidrash from the Pesukim. But all agree, Torah Shabbat Chassav is not enough. You need more, you need Torah Shabbat Chassav. How could Rabbi Yechanan indicate otherwise? No, says the Gemara. Rabbi Yechon doesn't mean that. My Torah. When Rabbi Yechon says the word Torah, he means Midrash Torah. The Drashas, the Brises, the Halachas that we learn from the Torah, Torah Shabbat. Continues the Gemara. Bahani, really, when do we say that this is sufficient? The Amr law, Tanina. He says, you know, I'm a Tanina, I know how to, you know, I know how to learn. Aval Amr law, Tanana. But if he calls himself a Tanana, that's like a title. He needs to be more advanced. Adatani, he has to be knowledgeable in Hilchasa, in the Allahi, Safra, Vesafri, Vesafra, all the Bryces. Incidentally, that's why the, you know, the Tanoim, the Mishnahites were called Tanoim. They were experts in the, in the Bryces, in the Sifras, in the Sifris, in the Tershwa Peh. That's why they're called Tanoim. They were masters of, uh, of, of Tershwa Peh. And then in the Gemara, we have the Amiraim. You know why they call called Amiraim? You know, the Gemara in Rosh Hashanah describes a diver, calls him Amira, who dives into the plumes of depths of the sea. The Amiraim dug deeper, so to speak. They went into the Amik to expound, to elaborate, to explain the basic halachis of Tershu That's why they're called Amiraim. Tanoim, and then comes Amiraim. So a Tana, if I'm a Tana, I have to be an expert in Tershu Okay, what if he says, Amnash Ali Talmud Chacham? There's a great Talmud Chacham. What level does he have to achieve? Ain Oyim Rim Kishimun Ben Azai. He doesn't have to be, you know, the world's greatest Talmud Chacham. Like these two very well known Talmud Chacham, Rashi said they were the greatest in their time. They, were never, they weren't married and they didn't even have smicha. That's why they're called Talmud Chacham, like a young Chacham. Ain Oyim Rim, he doesn't have to conform to the standards of Kishimun Ben Azai or Kishimun Ben Zayma. Right? So Ben Zayma's name was Shimon. Shimon Ben Zayma. He doesn't have to be on that level. He has to be a basic Talmud Chacham. He has to know, uh, you know, be knowledgeable in areas that he knows. He has to have the ability to respond, you know, knowledgeably in areas that he's learning. Okay, you learned the uh, condition of Mtes. Okay, let me ask you a question. What's a Talmud Chacham? He has to know the answer. 
אפילו במסכת דקאלה. Even if he's uh, learning an easy Masechta, a b'risa called the Masech Haskala, and they ask him a simple question, yeah, that's, that's okay. As long as he's focused and he's learning. Now, what does it mean, a chacham? Amana shani chacham. So at what point is he deserving of that title? He doesn't have to be the biggest chacham, like the chachamim in Yavne, like the Kiva B'chaver, no. Ela kol sheshoi lo moise dvar chachamim kol mokim moim. Again, you ask him, Advar Chachma. Rashi says Var Chachma is different than a halacha. Var Chachma requires understanding, appreciating svara. So you ask him something which requires depth and svara, and he can respond properly. That's called a Chacham. I'm not shani gibur. I'm conditioned that I'm a strong man. And I'm Avner ben Ner, Kuyayi ben Tzuriyo. It doesn't have to be have the exhibit the strength of these uh, mighty people. El kol shachaver. It's all relative. El kol shachaver of misyarim, menem pnei gvorasai. What's considered a gibor? If his friends uh, are fearful of his gvor. I'm an ashani ash. I'm conditioned that I'm a wealthy man. It doesn't have to be the world's greatest. Uh, Asher, ain't Oyrim Kirabelazab and Kharsam like him or Kirabelazab and Azayah who are very wealthy. Ra- rather, it means a relative to his, uh, to his neighbors, he's considered wealthy. He's a fellow who earns his townspeople respect because of his wealth. Oh, here comes amazing Gemara. I'm a college student, conditioned I'm a tzaddik. Now, this fellow is a um, a career bank robber. Does it work? Yep. Afilo Rasha Gomer. Even if he was known his whole life to be a complete Rasha, still we say that it's a Suffolk and she's Mekodesh is me Suffolk. Why? He's a Rasha. How could he uh, present himself as a Tzaddik? Shema Hire Teshuva Bedati. Maybe at that moment he had a shift in his heart. He did shuv in his heart, even though he didn't actually return his money and all that. But in terms of the personal status, he has a dinner of a tzaddik gomer, and we have to be concerned about that, and we have to treat it as a valid condition to a certain extent, uh, you know, misafik. On the flip side, I'm an ashani rasha. On condition I'm a rasha, I feel a tzaddik gomer, even we know that he's a tzaddik his whole life, mikudeshes, we have to be concerned that perhaps it's a condition, shema hirer devar avodis kachom to maybe... He had notions of Avedi Zorah, and we learned back a couple of weeks ago that when it comes to Avedi Zorah, back on the Mem, Hashem reckons with even feelings. It's a, it's a matter of belief and, you know, where you stand in Amunah, so therefore, you never know what's going on in his heart, and that's a concern. Okay, on, to, on the topic of wealth and strength, says the Gemara, Sora Kabim. It's a metaphor, ten measures. It means a, a certain, you know, portion of a certain amount of chachm, of wisdom, wisdom regarding Torah, wisdom regarding, you know, uh, business dealings, Torah, V'der Acher, says Rashi, a certain amount of chachma was embedded in the world. Yor Deloila. Who took the lion's share? Eretz Yisrael. We know Avira, Eretz Yisrael, Machim, even the ear in Eretz Yisrael wisens a person. Tisha, so nine of ten went to Eretz Yisrael. Not to Eretz Yisrael, but Echad Kolam Kul, and the rest distributed throughout the world. Ten measures of beauty descended on the world. Tisha not to Yerushalayim. Nine went to Yerushalayim. Bechad kolam kulin the rest to the world. Asar kabim mashiros yordleilim. Ten measures of wealth come down. Tisha not to Rome. Nine tenths went to Rome. Bechad kolam kulin the rest elsewhere. Yud kabim anius yordleilim. Ten measures of poverty came down. Tisha not to Babel. Nine went to Babel. Bechad kolam kulin the rest to the world. Asar kabim gas yordleilim. Nine ten measures of Haughtiness and pride descended. Tisha not la Elam. Elam took nine of ten portions of Echad Kolam Kuloi. The tenth went elsewhere. Asks the Gemara. So you mean that Elam grabbed, you know, the, all this uh, haughtiness and Bubble didn't? But Gasus la Bubble, the You mean that Gasus didn't come to Bubble? But Ksil, we have a Pasuk. This is in Zachariah. So I'm noticing two Noshim, these were uh, sort of symbols of Yetzirah's, uh, carrying haughtiness and 
traits of haughtiness and flattery. And they have these wings like a chasidah bird. And they took this container which contained the spirit of the Yitzhahara ben Aurat ben Hashemayim. Va'imar al-Malach al-Rebbi, and I turned to the Malach, speaking to me, Anna, Hema Malicha, he says, Eva, where are they taking these, uh, these negative traits? Va'yomer, he tells me, Libna Yisla, Ba'yiz ve'er Chinner, they're going to build a home in Bavl. That's where they're going to park themselves. Va'arabi Yechanon, what exactly is this? Su'chanufa ve'gas sarroch, these are the traits of flattery and haughtiness. Shiyod l'Bavl, they arrived in Bavl. So apparently, Bavl is saturated with uh, gasus. Says the Gemara, yeah, in Lach Anachas. True, both these things came down to Bavl, but gasus didn't last in Bavl. But in terms of haughtiness, that rolled away to Elam, did not stay in Bavl. And I'll prove it as a fact. Because the Pasuk says, Livnos Lobayis. So initially they were carrying both things. They went to Bavl, but then it says, Livnos Lobayis, Be'er Shinar. And it, turned, it changed from plural to singular. She is building her home. Apparently only one of these aspects remained. The other one, Balgava Gasas, did not end up in bubble. It uh, continued on to Elam. Shmamina. Any? Is that so? That bubble is not known for its haughtiness? Va'amar Mar. Haven't we learned that what's an indicator? What's a simon Lagasas Haruach? What, what uh, is a simon um, what is an indicator for gav? Anius, poverty. Right? So poverty is synonymous with gasus. And we know that poverty is for the most part in bubble. We said that before. Anius be bubble dik. No, 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 says the word. We're not speaking about financial poverty. My anius. When we speak about anius being synonymous with gava, it means anius to teira. Poor in teira. And Rashi explains. Around halfway down the album. Ani is the Torah. The Eina Noich Al Gase Gase Yeruach. Torah does not um, sit well with Bali Gaiva. It's not compatible. More than the um, you know the school aspect, in a more practical sense as well. The Metoich Gasusai. Look, when a person is haughty and know it all, Ein Moshamish Kol Tzorchi. He's not going to delve into the halachas properly. Ein Machaz Al Shmosai. He's not going to review it. I know it. I remember it. So being overconfident, expressing Gasus. Is inconsistent with being learned. The chsiv, as the pasuk says, "Achoy is lanu ketan of ashadayim elo." Have a sister without press. What does that mean? Zu elam. It's a reference to the town of elam. Shezachsa lilmoid, lezachsa lamid. So although they uh, they learned a lot of Torah there, but they didn't teach. They didn't give it over. No shadayim. Shadayim is meant to feed a baby. So the chachamim in elam, although they were learned, but they weren't zeicha to pass it on, to perpetuate and um, teach Torah. So Elam uh, ultimately lost their Torah. There's no continuity as opposed to Bavl. Rashi says Bavl had teachers. Ezra and others, right? It was a center of learning. It was a metropolitan of learning. So in Mela, when we speak about Bavl's Aniyas, we're not speaking about lacking in Torah. It was saturated with terror, filled with terror. The Aeneas in Bavl was uh, material Aeneas. But in Elam, there was a spiritual Aeneas as well because of the Gassas of Ruach, which parked itself primarily in Elam and not in Bavl. Furthermore, Sarah Kavim Gvur Yordel Elam, there were ten measures of strength that came down. Tisha Notlu Parsim. Nine went to the Persians. Asura kavim kinu yodeloilam. Lice. Tisha not lam modai. Modai took nine. Asura kavim kshafim. Sorcery. Yodeloilam. Tisha not lam mitzrayim. We know mitzrayim was the center of sorcery. Asura kavim negoim nor yodeloilam. Who took nine out of ten? Tess not to the chazir. The chazirim who spent time in the trash, they got the sicknesses, the uh, negoim. Yud kavim zenus yodeloilam. Ten measures of Zenus comes down. Tisha not la'arviya. The Arabs took nine out of ten. Asoro kavim azus yodeloilam. Ten kav of brazenness, which Rashi says is synonymous with being a mamzer. Tisha not la'meshan. Meshan is full of mamzer. Asoro kavim sicha yodeloilam. Ten measures of speech and socialization comes down. Who took the lion's share? The women. Tisha not lunashem. 
Women are t- tend to be more verbal and wordy. That's that's their nature. Asara kavim shichushyot leilam. Ten kav of drunkenness. Tisha not lukushim. Lukushim, the dark-skinned people. The uh, they're experts at this. Asara kavim shena yod leilam. Ten kav of sleep and laziness. Who took the lion's share? The lazy slaves. Tisha not lu avodim. Echad not lu. The rest went to kala elam kule. Continues the Mishnah, which is actually something we learned a bit, a bit on Amun Aleph. Amun Ashani Kain. So once again, he approaches the Isha. Here's your ring. On condition that I'm a Kain, if Nimtza Levi, turns out he's only a Levi. Or he said he's a Levi, but Nimtza Kain. Nasa, but Nimtza Mamzer. Mamzer, but Nimtza Nasa. Ben Ir, but Nimtza Minkrach. I live in a, you know, a medium-sized city. Turns out that he's living in this big, major, uh, you know, metropolitan, which uh, Rashi says is sometimes a bit difficult for a person who's not accustomed to it. It's busy. It's uh, lacking privacy. It's noisy. Or he says, Ben Krach, I live in a big Krach, but it turns out that he's just, uh, you know, uh, a small city man. On condition that my home is right near the bathhouse and it's convenient, but it turns out that he's a mile away. Or he says he's a mile away, but it turns out that he's close. Oh, here's the case. On condition that I have a daughter, a shifcha, already older, but he doesn't have. On condition that I don't have, he does have. On condition that he doesn't have any kids, Vyeshla, he does have a family full of kids. He says, I'm bringing five kids in the family who will be company to your kids, right? Turns out he doesn't have anything. Ubakulam, in all these situations where he misled her, even if she'll say, look, I'm okay with anything. Although he spoke about this, but you know, I'm okay with anything. It still doesn't work because after all, he misled her. It's not as per their condition. And the same thing applies if she misled him. The condition does not work. Okay, let's recap today. Isdaf. Suppose there was some sort of deviation, which we call Mare Mokim I asked you to do something, you do something else, which is perhaps more difficult, but ultimately it's on the same wavelength, same, you know, uh, sort, sort of the same result. So Abai gave us a list of three Tanoim, Rabbi Shimon. That's in the case of the uh, gold, which turned out to be silver by the Kedushin. We have Rabbi Shimon Amliel in the case of the the get where the cipher upgraded from the husband's instructions. And we have the case of Rebelezer where the Isha asked the fellow to accept the get and he went elsewhere. Mare Mokim Uloi and it works. Now although Reb Shimon says if you upgrade it works. Says Ulo that's only in terms, in terms of financials but in terms of Yichus that's an expression of haughtiness and even Reb Shimon would agree uh, you know Isha says you're not for me. Then we went on to a whole list of um, terms and titles and designations, Karyayna and Tanna and this and that, Chacham and Tzaddik, and what he needs to do to conform to that status for the condition to work. That took us to the next piece of Gemara, with the Asara Kavim of Chachma, and Yaifi, and Aisher, etc., etc., all the way down to the Mishnah, where once again she bargained for one thing, she got something else. Where we say it's Enim Kodeshis. And even if she'll say, I'm okay with it, but since it wasn't as expressed verbally, it's not a condition, and it works both ways, whether he misled her or she misled him. Okay? All the best to you and Atzlachara.